morning. Good morning. We are here at the bridge with a bunch of holes in it. These bridges often have. Which they do often do at Great Barford. On the uh, River Great Ooze. Mm -hmm. Just above Great Barford Lock. Literally just above. There's like less than 50 feet. Well, 100 feet. 100 feet. There's less than 100 feet. And it's one of my new favorite. more like 150 feet. Anyway. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, however far away it is. It's one of my new favorite moorings. It's just so nice here. Um, kind of regretted mooring personally on the EA side rather than the Goba side. Mm -hmm. Because... And it's a lovely reason, but the green was just covered with people yesterday, and it was really nice because they were like there were families and there were kids and they were swimming and they were kayaking and and they were picnicking and it was just really nice. But it would have been a bit quieter over there, yeah. which we should have realised, but we didn't. Yeah, and we would have left people more space to jump in the water. At the same time, not long after we arrived, someone else pulled up onto the mooring on the Goba side. So, yeah. Yeah. So we would have pushed them over here. But, uh, but it's just yeah, so nice. it's Great Barford is really nice. It's a fairly short walk into town where you can get uh, some nice Momo. Yeah, unless you suddenly have an urgent email thing that you have to do, so you send your wife. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you need to respond right away. Uh oh. <laughs> I am not walking to Kathmandu Kitchen. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, it was a fairly short walk for Joe into and out, and, and uh, George enjoyed it. And then we enjoyed the mama. You did. And, uh, yeah. And I'm just looking at the tap. Well, last time we were moored just over there, we were heading that way to Bedford. And we were like, there's a, the map's wrong. It says the tap. There's no tap. And Mike was, find the tap. Mike was like, I've looked everywhere for the tap. It's literally under that tree. <laughs> In my defense, I looked everywhere that the map pointed to. The map's um, indications were all that that water tap was not underneath that. Anyway, tree. we don't need water now because we actually filled up in Bedford. But so if you get to Great Barford and you need water, look under the big tree. It's <laughs> very, very obvious if you're looking in the entirely wrong location from the map's perspective. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, back towards St. Neots today, just south of St. Neots. I think we're going to stop. I think we're going to go to the moorings at Eaton and Suffolk again? Yeah. Same place? Yeah. Okay. Someone's left their willies. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> sitting at a bench over there is a couple of wellies, like a pair of wellies, good-sized pair of wellies, too. Might even fit you. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Um, and it's another gorgeous day, so very happy and excited about cruising. Yeah, it should just be a couple of hours of pleasant cruising, um, barring anything weird happening with the weather. The weather looks good. we got lots of little pointillist clouds in the sky it's uh yeah it's gonna be a nice day so you're going to walk george over to that lock yeah i'm going to move us into that lock the lock is open in our it's direction on the other side so i'll probably cross the bridge behind us i could go that way it's quicker that way but it's much quicker that way i want to go that way she wants to go that way which means i will be waiting in the lock at the bottom for her to show up or you could just wait here <laughs> No, I'll go up there, get in. Well, no, the whole reason I want to walk is to get some shots. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't know that. I thought you were just, you know. Big annoying. Trying to annoy me. Because, because, yeah. All right. So should I wait then? Yeah. Okay. I should wait then. All right. I'll, I will sit here, listening on the radio for Joe to tell me I'm in camera position. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. The boat on the opposite bank leaves just before us, but because these lock chambers are so lovely and long, we're able to share the lock with them. The other boat turns out to be a hire boat from the bridge boat yard in Ely, and the holiday boaters aboard are making their way back to the base.
There's a tree down here, but thankfully the river is wide enough that we can just go around it. Michael drops me off at Roxton Lock and we're sharing with the hire boat again. So I just made it into the lock with the other boat and we're kind of a little bit skewed because as you can see it's quite tight. Situated between the two Thamesford bridges is the Kelpie Marine Boatyard.
We have arrived. We are back at Eaton Soken. It is, um, I don't know what time in the afternoon, actually. Snoonish. That's snoonish, yeah. <laughs> it's the thing about being on a boat, you often lose track of time. I lose track of days. I looked at for months. As far as I know, it's January. Anyway, we're here. We're in Eaton Soken. And uh, the lock is literally just that way. So between us and St. Neots is. It's quite, it's a couple of miles. Yeah. But yeah. Just that one lock, hopefully. Right, and St. Neot's lock is above the town, so yeah. we should be just through here and on our way uh, tomorrow morning, and then we will get to St. Neot's where we can stack the boat up somewhere and then go for uh, a quick train ride into London. Just a very lovely, trouble-free, event-free yeah. cruise this morning. We did get lucky on weather. It's been beautiful and blue sky and shiny, uh, but that way, coming towards us, are some large ominous gray clouds, and we do have a bit of a forecast of rain. So. We also got lucky that as we were leaving the uh, moorings, there was a boat, a higher boat on the gravel moorings that were leaving. So I was like, oh no, we've lost the lock, um, because they were there before us. and. We was, thought they might be big enough that we couldn't fit the two boats in. Well, I didn't even think about it, to be honest. And then I was like, oh no, I should, it's because I spent all that time <laughs> saying I'd walk the long way around and change my mind. Mm. And then Michael just had the clever idea that we'd fit in together, and we did, like, them in front and us behind. So, yeah, it was really nice showing a look. Yeah. I was a little close to the sill. On the second one. Uh, more so on the second one than the first one. On the first one, it was like... No, I'm watching all of the the water go beneath each of the sort of large um, iron kind of divots in the wall. And each time it makes this quite interesting noise as the water goes below it. And it's just like the air comes in and oh, all okay. sort of slaps out and makes this kind of clapping noise. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I'd noticed the sill markings, but then when the actual sill popped up, I was like, oh, that is closer than I thought <laughs> it was. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it was uh, not as good. Good. Uh, Good to get in there with people. They were also viewers, so they said hi, and we were like, hello! Why do you know our first names? Oh, yeah, right! <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that was cool. Yeah, they're on their way to uh, all the way back to Ely, so they've got a bit of a run to do, and unfortunately, they've blocked by a lock up ahead that is uh, currently undergoing some maintenance. But that should be cleared by tomorrow, and by the time we get back, it'll be done, so we won't have to worry about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just a short one today. And um, George has been a relatively good dog. I mean, he's been on the back, but he did decide to just take one of the balls we use to mark our mooring pins. Yeah, we just store them back there behind the controller just because they just squeeze in there. Yeah. And lots of people comment that it's George's ball stash. It's not. It's where you cut a little slit in them and then they go over the mooring pins so that... Because they're just like jagged metal, so it just stops yeah. people tripping over them. Anytime we're on sort of a busy towpath, this is quieter and we're quite a ways away from the side. But it is funny but when dogs come along and they sniff them. They and they, they sniff them and occasionally steal them. But uh, but most of them are balls that we found in the river. Yeah. And I've plucked them out and been like, ah, I don't really want George to have that. So I'll cut it open and just put it in there and, and make it you know a useful tool in the future. Normally, George ignores that stash of balls. Like, he, he might see them but he doesn't kind of like do anything about it. But I guess today when I was putting the ones back that I'd used to keep people from tripping oh, yesterday, night, yeah. I must have shifted one of them because- he, the, he got the smell. Well, because normally he's sitting there at the back sort of staring off the rear and he's not kind of in my area. And, and this time I'm just like, oh, oh, George is cuddling against me. George must really be sort of like feeling a little nope. worried today or whatever. And then I just, you know, his head just pops up and, and he just steals a ball. Oh, sun's come out. Sun's come out. Oh. Sorry, sun, sun, sun just very much came clear through the clouds there and uh, completely blinded us. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you already. Subscribe to Minimalist. Subscribe if you already. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximum Velocity if you want our time-lapse videos. And click that bell if you want to get notifications. 